Every morning, we ask Wall Street's brightest minds to share the word that they believe will describe the trading day ahead. Tom Lee, what is your WEX word of the day? Uh, the word of the day is better. All right, why? You got to explain that one. Just better? It's a, it's a little bit of a generic one, Tom. You got to give us an explanation for how it shapes the day. Well, I think earnings season is underway. And I think the message we're going to see from companies is that results are better than fear. The economy is better than fear. Uh, that's a contrast to last year when everything was slightly worse than feared, whether it was inflation or Fed's reaction. And that better than feared is the reason stocks are kind of levitating because you've got a lot of bad news priced in. All right, Tom, you're a known optimist and known bull for the market. You believe that we have a bit of a bullish setup right now, but I got to ask you, where's this all coming from? We're seeing the S&P only up 1% this month, the NASDAQ down almost a percent. What are the bullish signals that you're seeing? Uh, well, there's a couple things, you know, Foremost, it's a seasonal positive because April is going to be probably one of the strongest months in 2023 based on what we call our rule of first five days. How the market performed the first five days uh, has been a good template this year because it said February will be flat, March will be better, and April should be stronger. But one thing that's sort of starting to take shape is that over the last 20 trading days, about 65% of the days have been up. That's the highest percentage since November 2021. So while markets have actually bottomed in October, it hasn't felt very good because, you know, in that period of time, the market's only averaged 45% of updates. But over the last 20, it's actually increased to 65. That's what you typically feel when you're in a rising trend. So I, I think over the next couple of months, it's going to start to feel like a bull market. Um, of course, we actually do need everything to be better than feared, but I'd say that the setup is quite good. All right, so the setup is good. So specifically today, where will we see signs of that bull market? I know you're bullish when it comes to materials and industrials. You believe that they're more attractive than healthcare is right now. But where will we see those potential bullish signs, especially today? Well, I think I think that's really where the leadership has been coming from in the last month or so, as the four groups you just mentioned. But I, I think increasingly, uh, where people are worried about either financial sector stability or capital spending. Uh, the two groups to watch really in the coming week are going to be financials and technology. I think technology kind of sold off because, uh, you know, we've we've had some curveballs like last Friday's UNICH confidence survey, which showed inflation picked up, or the fears the Fed might have to do more. But again, if, if banks find stability, and so far bank results have been better than feared, I think you could see leadership coming increasingly from not only those four groups, plus but from financials and technology. Okay, that's really interesting. And speaking of a curveball, we had Janet Yellen come out over the weekend saying that the banking crisis may serve the same effect as hiking rates, so maybe we won't need those hikes. Obviously, she's not part of the Fed. She's the, sec the Secretary of the Treasury. But what does that signal to you about what we might see today? Is that going to give the markets perhaps more confidence that a pause could be on the way? Uh, I mean, I think investors should interpret that as a pause coming because – I mean, largely, I, I agree with, with her observation. You know, financial conditions are tightening because regional banks and banks in general have been cautious, but now you have an additional sort of pressure on their cost of money, which is going to reduce lending. That is exactly what monetary policy is trying to achieve, is to slow the economy. So is the Fed doing hikes on, on its own? At this point, not. It's not, because as, soon, you know, as it's doing its hikes, there's also this additional element of credit tightening. And that's probably why pause argument makes a lot of sense. Okay. So you, again, see the markets adding this month, uh, at least the S&P adding to its about 1% gain. Today, where will we see signs of that? I'm going to ask you again. I mean, are you seeing any area today that we could see some signs of this bull market you're expecting? Well, you know, it's going to just come down to earnings season because that's really going to be the catalyst. And we, you know, we're only early in the early earnings season, only 32 of the 500 S&P companies have reported. So the next couple of weeks, Frank, is really going to be kind of company-specific earnings that are getting delivered. Last week was the banks, and now we start to get some of the larger industrials and some tech. Okay. You mentioned tech. We have some big tech earnings coming up this week, Netflix and Tesla. What are you expecting from them? Could they potentially be a catalyst for the NASDAQ to reverse this month? Uh, yes. That's always, uh, you know, that's kind of how earnings season played out three months ago, it's going to be, our, our company's going to surprise us on the demand side. I mean, I don't know if Tesla and Netflix necessarily singularly move the markets, but their individual performance is going to be important to watch because at the end of the day, 
Uh, these are widely held names. So, you know, let's hope for the best. 